Dies ist die 3D View Master Erzählung Tom Sawyer von Mark Twain. View Master Real One. Picture One. It was the kind of fragrant spring morning to lure any boy outdoors. Two sounds broke the stillness in Hannibal, Missouri. The harsh jangle of a school bell and from the Mississippi River the whistle of a steamboat. Tom Sawyer, late as usual, came running out of the door of his aunt Polly's house, swinging his school books and slate on a strap. He heard the steamboat whistle and looked wistfully toward the river. Then, quickly, he ditched his books and cap in a hedge and began running joyfully down the street. Plunging up a slope to the river bank, Tom saw a splendid sight, the mighty river queen coming in for a landing. He waved and a captain responded with a blast of the whistle. Tom watched the boat glide by, then scooted into the woods. He followed a path to a hidden lagoon, beside which stood a lonely, tumble-down shack facing the river. A raggedly dressed boy was hanging a gunny sack on the outside wall. Hey, Huck, called Tom. What you got in the sack? Holy Tom, said Huckleberry Finn. That's the widow Douglas' dead cat. I'm fixing to cheat the devil with it. Cheat the devil? How you gonna do that? Well, you know, old Hoss Williams is dying. On the day a sinner's buried, the devil comes at midnight to fetch his soul. You have a dead cat on the grave just then, and the cat comes back to life. I'm gonna try it when old horse is buried. Picture two. Tom Sawyer, I told you to stay away from that worthless Huggleberry Finn, scolded Aunt Polly. And you played hooky, too. Now, young man, you can just whitewash this fence, all of it, Two coats. Tom survived the monstrous length of fence with dismay. Then he sighed and dipped a brush into the bucket. Whatcha doing, Tom? Joe Jefferson, a black boy, came up to watch with interest. Tom suddenly had an idea. He began to work enthusiastically with a big smile on his face. I'm sorry for you, Joe, he said, cause you can't get what I get. I get satisfaction. Yes, sir, and gratification. Joe was intrigued. Hey, let me have a turn, please, Tom. He tuck, he dug into his pocket and pulled out a cut glass decanter. Top. I'll give you my glass stopper. Chinu wine crystal. Well, all right, said Tom, with fiend reluctance. He handed Joe the brush and Joe began to whitewash vigorously. Picture three. One by one, other boys came along, enviously seeking the privilege of helping to whitewash. They emptied their pockets of their treasures and offered them to Tom in payment. Finally, 15 boys were hard at work on the fence while Tom took his ease in the shade. Picture 4. Tom Sawyer! You, Tom, where are you? called Aunt Polly. Then she saw the fence sparkling white in the sunshine. My stars and two coats! But Tom was several blocks away, watching a new family moving into a vacant house. Stacked on the front porch were some boxes and upside down a large frame painting of a ship. To get a better look at it, Tom climbed a tree and hung 
upside down by his knees. He heard a peal of girlish laughter. Swinging to an upright position, Tom find himself staring at a vision of loveliness, a blonde girl about his age. Hello, she said with a smile. What's your name? Tom Sawyer, what's yours? I'm Rebecca Thatcher, but everybody calls me Becky. My father's a church. We just moved here from St. Petersburg. Picture 5. Tom whistled as he walked on down the street. For some reason, golden-haired Becky Thatcher's faith kept floating before his eyes, and life was suddenly exciting. As he approached Doc Robinson's office, he saw the wagon of Clayton, the casket maker, standing in front of it. Then the front door of the office opened, and two men came out. Tom smiled as he saw the first one, Muff Potter, the genial town drunk, who was Tom's friend. But the sight of the second man sent a chill of fear through Tom. He was Inchon Cho, a tall, brooding, ominous character who limped on a mishappen right leg and whose eyes burned with hatred for all mankind. Inchon Cho slunk out of sight, but Muff turned and saw Tom. Lo, Tom, old horse Williams is dead. He's laying there in Doc's back room right now. They're gonna bury him today. Excitedly, Tom remembered Huck's plan to experiment with the dead cat. I gotta go see Huck Finn, he told Muff. Let's hitch a ride on Clayton's wagon, said Muff. There he goes, they ran and swung themselves up onto the wagon, singing, Oh, a man's gotta be what's what he's born to be. Picture 6 It was almost midnight. Stealthily, Tom and Huck entered the old graveyard. Huck clutching the sack with the dead cat in it. Somewhere, far away, a dog howled. Suddenly, a sharp scraping sound just ahead of them sent the boys' hearts leaping into their throats. Shaking, they crept ahead on all fours and cowered behind a tombstone. The sound continued, the scratching noise of two shovels digging in rocky earth. The boys peeked out at a horrifying sight. Hoss William's grave, whispered Huck. In Chun Cho and a drunken muff potter were digging up the new grave while Doc Robinson stood over them, giving orders. Picture 7 Hurry up, you scum! Doc spat and at Injun Cho. Cho straightened up. Who you calling scum, Dr. Robinson? He asked in a deadly tone. Injun Cho pushed Doc over a tombstone, and the two men began to fight viciously. Doc swung a shovel at Inchon Chon Cho, but the shovel caught Muff, who was drunkenly trying to intervene. It raped him sharply on the head and knocked him senseless. Inchon Cho lifted a tombstone, brought it down on Doc's head and knocked him into the grave. Then he took a knife from the belt of the unconscious Muff and plunged it into Doc Robinson again and again. Doc screamed once. Huck and Tom sprang to their feet and ran from there as fast as they could. They found an empty house and scooted inside. Huck found a candle and lit it. Injun John will kill us if he finds out we know, said Huck. I'll keep mum if you will. It's a blood pact, said Tom. Huck tore off a piece of wallpaper, and Tom, with a pencil stub, wrote on it. Huck, Finn, and Tom Sawyer swear they will keep mum about this, and they wish they may drop dead 
if they tell. Each boy pricked his thumb and made a streak of blood below the oath. Few master reel two. Picture one. Muff Potter was in jail, charged with the murder of Doc Robinson. His bloody knife had been found at the scene and the townspeople believed he was guilty. Aunt Polly found a fallen Tom huddled by the chicken coop. What is it, boy? Something's bothering you? He looked up at her in anguish. If you had swore to keep mum about something and someone else was in a heap of trouble because you knew about it but couldn't tell. She stood up impatiently. I haven't got time for riddles. Picture two. The town meeting hall had been turned into a temporary courtroom. Church, Thatcher, Peggy's father was presiding. Muff was on trial for his life. The room was filled with spectators, including a tense Tom Sawyer. Finally, Injun Cho was called as a state witness. He said he had seen Muff and the doctor fighting in the graveyard. Before I could stop him, he continued. He was on the dock, plunking that knife in him. Suddenly, Tom was on his feet. He's a liar, he shouted. I seen it. It didn't happen that way at all. Pandemonium broke loose and Church Thatcher pounded his gavel for order. He asked Tom to come to the witness chair. Then Injun Joe picked up a tombstone, Tom testified, and knocked Dog Robinson down into the grave. And that's when Injun Joe took Muff's knife and stabbed Dog. Picture 3. Suddenly a knife slammed into the chair near Tom's head. Injun Cho sprinted to the window, window, leaped through it with a shattering of glass and was gone. After him, shouted the church, I'm going straight up to the county seat. I'll demand a substantial reward posted for that killer, dead or alive. After that, Tom was a hero to everyone but three people, his own Polly, who berated him for saving the life of a worthless drunk art, her son Sidney, who was jealous of Tom, and Huck, who was furious at Tom for breaking the blood pact. Injun Cho's gonna find us and cut our throats, said Huck. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hide out on the island till they catch him. I'm taking my raft over there tonight. Picture 4. That night, Huck and Tom pulled the raft down the river toward the island. Tom had decided to run away with Huck, both because he feared Injun Cho's revenge and because he felt he wasn't appreciated by Aunt Polly. As they floated along in the darkness, a steamboat whistled loudly behind them. The huge river queen, her cabin lights twinkling, was rapidly bearing down on the raft. Jump! shouted Huck. They divide into the water, just as the pro of the boat struck the raft and sent it flying. Miraculously, both boys were able to swim to the island. They pooled their meager resources, built a rough lean to of three limbs and wines and settled down to live. One morning, a few days later, they were awakened by a loud boom. Looking out of their lean to, they saw a barg loaded with men and a cannon going upriver. The men were dragging the river with grappling hooks. Somebody must have drowned it, observed Tom. 
sound of the cannon is supposed to bring up the bodies. Then, as the cannon boomed again, a sudden realization hit him. Hey, maybe they's looking for us. He grew thoughtful. Aunt Mary be worrying about me. Something awful. Huggy, I gotta go home. Wish we wasn't stuck on this island. Suddenly, Huck grabbed his arm and pointed up the beach. Tom, look, our raft. It washed ashore during the night. Picture 5. It was a sad group of townspeople gathered in the little church for the double funeral of two boys who were believed to have drowned. Aunt Polly's grief was intensified by feelings of guilt and self-blame. And now, said the Reverend Sprague, the eulogy for our two young men will be spoken by the Hon Church, Cyrus Thatcher. Church Thatcher stepped to the pulpit. Thomas Sawyer and the lad we've all come to know and love as Huggleberry Finn, gone. Gone from our midst, taken in the spring of their bloom, looking heavenward. With his eyes closed, he continued, Thomas, Huckleberry, wherever you are now, we will always remember you. His eyes opened and he gulped. Tom and Huck, tears streaming down their dirty faces, were walking slowly down the aisle of the church. Everybody began shouting at once. Aunt Polly rushed up to Tom and hugged him tightly. Oh, Tom, thank God you're safe. Then she added through her tears sternly. Thomas Sawyer, when I get you home, I'm going to thrash you within an inch of your life. Picture 6. It was picnic day in Hannibal, an occasion made even more joyous by the safe return of Tom and Huck. Everyone, young and old, met at the town square and piled into assorted buggies and wagons, including a hay wagon for the children. Then the caravan moved to the picnic grounds. Picture 7 a long, long table set up on sawhorses was loaded with food by the woman folks. While the pleasant activity was going on, Tom, Huck, Becky and the other youngsters whooped it up with races and games of all kinds. You master reel three. Picture 1 After the meal came a special treat. A travelling photographer was in town and would take a group picture. Everyone tried to hold rigidly still while he counted slowly to 30, and they blinked as his flash powder went off. Later, as dusk fell, Tom Becky and another boy and girl were in earnest discussion at the edge of the picnic grounds. Tom, carrying a lantern, led them on the foot of a hill. The lantern's light disclosed a dark opening in the hillside. See, there it is, he said. That's MacDougall's cave. And there's an underground river in there. Me and Huck's been there lots of times. How do you like to taste the best drinking water in Missouri? Not me, said the boy. Come on, Becky, urged Tom. We'll be back out in time for, for the fireworks. He gave her the lantern, ran to a nearby campfire, seized a burning stick for a torch and hurried back to Becky. Together they entered the cave. Picture 2 Oh, this is beautiful, exclaimed Becky as their lantern and torch illuminated an underground sinage wonderland. Soon they heard 
Up ahead, at the sound of a rushing subterranean river, Tom ran ahead and called. Here it is, Peggy. What did I tell you? She came up to him. At their feet a stream of crystal clear water came cursing out of the rock. Putting the torch and lantern carefully down, they knelt to drink. Becky glanced up and screamed. There, across the narrow stream, holding a blazing torch, stood Injun Cho. Tom picked up his own torch, grabbed Becky's hand and rushed her away. Her lantern was left behind, forgotten. I'm gonna kill you, Tom Sawyer, called Injun Cho as he shuffled after them. You'll never get out of here alive. Picture 3 Back at the picnic area, a suddenly worried group of men, including Church Thatcher, Muff and Huck, had organized a search party to go into the cave. Inside, the party split in two, going in opposite directions. Huck, guessing the way Tom and Becky had gone, led Muff and the church toward the underground river. Meanwhile, Tom and Becky, climbing between large rocks, stopped at an opening and Tom held his torch high. Becky screamed again. Half a human skeleton lay on the cave floor. Tom put his arm around her. Shh, Becky, come on! In the distance behind them, they heard faintly the voice of Church Thatcher calling, Becky! Tom! Becky! They are almost here, Becky, Tom whispered exultantly. Picture 4 Suddenly, a torchlight shone on them from above. Tom looked up and was petrified with fear. Immediately above them, on a high ledge, stood Injun Cho. With his free hand, he unsheathed a long knife. Now I've got you, Tom Sawyer, he croaked. Now you're dead. The word dead echoed eerily through the cave. Just then, up ran Muff, Huck and the church. Muff twirled his torch over his head. He let it fly toward Injun Cho. The torch smashed against Injun Cho, knocking him from his high perch. He fell backward, screaming. Tom and Becky stood frozen in horror as the prolonged scream echoed from the chasm far below, then was silent. Church Thatcher took his sobbing daughter into his arms. Picture 5 Huck hurried back to find the rest of the searchers. He guided them to the spot where Tom, Becky and the others were, and where Injun Cho had fallen to his death. Tom, said Judge Thatcher, a reward was posted for the capture of Injun Cho, dead or alive, and you've earned it. Congre congratulations, my boy. Well, sir, I wasn't figuring on no reward or nothing, said Tom. But if it's all the same to you, I'd like Fair Huck and Muff to split it up with me. We are all in this together. Picture 6 It was a sparkling summer morning. The majestic River Queen waited at the Hannibal Landing. Congregated by the gangplank were Aunt Polly, her daughter Mary, her son Sidney, Church Thatcher, Widder Douglas, Peggy and a very happy Tom Sawyer. All the way to St. Louis, Tom, beamed Aunt Polly, and for two whole weeks she turned to third church Thatcher. It's awfully nice of you, Cyrus. The church beamed at her. My pleasure, Polly, and don't worry, I'll take good care of him. The boat's whistle tooted twice. Aunt Polly knelt and hugged Tom to her. I love you, Tom. I love you, Aunt Polly. 
picture 7. As the steamboat pulled away from the dock and churched out into the current of the Mississippi, the church stood at the rail with Tom and Beggy, and they all waved goodbye to Aunt Polly and the others. I was pleased to be named Gordon of your share of the Ruhr, Tom, said Church Thatcher. I've put it away in the bank for you. Did the same for Huggleberry Finn. He's surely the richest freebooter on the Mississippi now. In midstream, they saw Huck standing on his raft, waving to them. They waved and called to him. Do you think Huckleberry will ever change? Beggy asked Tom. Will he ever grow up? I don't know, said Tom thoughtfully. A man's gotta be what he's born to be, I reckon.